Praise the Lord, friends. Thomas Manton IV here. I have a, a very startling word from the Lord today to speak to you, and we're going to get right into it. Father, thank you for your touch. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for thinking through my mind, speaking through my lips, what is on your mind. And uh, I don't know what everyone else is doing in the world, but I know I was born to be blessed. I was born to be a devil destroyer. <laughs> I was born to be a, a kingdom advancer, a kingdom entrepreneur, a kingdom wealth receiver and wealth strategist, a success strategies releaser. And I want to start off by saying, you know, some people are looking for their little, you know, church experience or whatever. Nicey, nice church. Well, you, you find yourself a nice pastor who's, you know, knows how to smile at you all the time, but they probably don't mean it anyway. But I'm, I'm the one that's the prophetic voice that's coming to tell you the truth. And, you know, remember Jesus uh, made this statement, they that are of the truth will hear my voice. They that want the truth will hear my voice. So somehow that limits our audience, you know. <laughs> You know, when you want to talk to thinkers and truth seekers, you know, that could limit your audience a bit. You know what I mean? So this nicey, nice, you know, shuffle around culture club. I spoke about this before. Church in the wind, you know, church in the culture and the society. And it all seems like, you know, this way and that way. That's, 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 that's okay, but it's very shallow. You, you won't grow much in that environment. But when you're under the word of God... Oh my, things begin to shift. I've said this before, it bears repeating. When you are really touched by heaven and you're really walking with God, you know, like every day is a new adventure. Like every week seems like another season. Like next week is like something new is happening that's so amazing. And you're like, I remember this time like a week ago, two weeks ago, a month ago, and things are completely different now completely different now than they were. Someone lift your hands and thank God for that grace because a lot of people don't have it. They stay in the same ritual, you know, of life. But I heard this word very clearly a few moments ago. And I love the fresh bread, you know, from heaven. I heard this word a few moments ago. It's one thing to plan your messages in advance, you know, so you can print them in the newsletter bulletin and all that. And, I, and I'm, I'm for that. But I'm, I'm more for the Holy Ghost ha having his way, you know. And God also said, you know, you're, you're not alive to do everybody's pleasure. You're, you're, you're there to do my pleasure. For his good pleasure was I born and planted in the earth. Revelation 4.11, I think it is. Somewhere in Revelation 4, it talks about my, you know, my purpose is to do the will of God. God said, for my glory I've made you. And Jesus said, for this purpose, well, John, John wrote it as a report in, in the book of John. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he'll destroy the works of the devil. And that's our job to do it in many ways. Now, I'll tell you something else. I was born, I don't know about you, but I was born to be extravagantly wealthy. God preordained that. And, you know, I've seen people come and go, rise and fall, you know, come nice, and then they come up with some, cook up some scheme of how they can do something funny, and God just brushes them off like flies and mosquitoes out the window. Lift your hands and say, I don't want to be one of those. Because you can be, you know. Psalm 108 said, the help of man is useless. I think the psalmist was in a bad mood that day when he wrote that. So I don't adhere all to that. I say the help of man can, can be useless, but it's not useless. I mean, the help of man can help a lot. You know, because the big thing that God has planned for you, you can't do by yourself. Hello. So that means other people have to get with the program. But I heard the voice of God from heaven. It's like a royal like a blasting trumpet sound. Woo! Not that the volume is loud, but the authority was loud. Whew. I was born. I'm making this prophetic declaration. And then I'm not saying like 
from this side of the fence, I'm hoping it to be so, because everybody seems to just want money these days, you know. That's all they think about. They sell their soul for money. They do anything stupid for money. They lie, cheat, and steal for money. But they can go to hell, too, with their money. But the money can't go with them. They can also, get, they can also just arrive in hell, you know, because of acting like that, you know. But that's not for mature sons and daughters of God. But you, you need to also understand... When the Lord spoke this to me, I thought, oh, my God, you know what? People have heard me say this so many times. It's like repetitive to the, to the exponential hilt, you know. I said, oh, wow, you know. I'm thinking about, I'm running through my mind. Can, can I preach about a different topic, you know? Something else. <laughs> I'm not, that, not that I'm requesting that. I, I just had that thought, you know. And the Lord said, are you kidding me? Speak what I tell you to say. Here it is. Proverbs 10.22 says, The blessing of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow or trouble with it. And I heard this statement, I was born to be extravagantly wealthy. I, I was watching this conference of these multi, multi-millionaires, guys worth hundreds of millions, you know, billions of dollars worth of real estate and properties and things like that and tremendous success in the business arena and it just like enlivened me you know somehow and then you click on the Sunday morning message of a local pastor and he ain't saying nothing you know what I mean so because it's a friend of someone I know I'll watch for 30 seconds I give it about 25 seconds and I'm out praise the Lord and then this now this uh, threat you know against a certain society of, of, of calamity and all that. And I'm like, well, I'm not talking about the virus. I'm talking about like a terrorism thing, you know. And people start crying and, you know, like, I'm, I'm out, I'm out. Skip the emotion. Let's get to the point. Let me say something about prophecy. Prophecy is not a hit and miss. You win some, you lose some. Well, I guess, sorry, I, sorry they, they say sorry they were wrong. And there's someone on the Internet now making these big de declarations about destruction that's supposed to happen. But I remember when they did a broadcast and they said something was going to happen in a certain city in America on such and such a date, such and such a week. Well, guess what? It never happened. I made a note of that. I said, can I listen to this one? No. I, so be, be careful about, well, I heard a prophecy. There's a prophecy going around. And is it true? Is it going to happen? I was telling a very, a very influential man yesterday under the anointing. I had a meeting with someone yesterday, and it, it, was, it was so powerful. And they, I was telling them uh, in Mar March, April, April of 1997. That's four and a half years, four and a half years before September 11, 2001. I described in detail how this great explosion would happen in the buildings in New York and thousands of people will die and blah, blah, blah. It'll be the worst thing that's ever happened in, in, in New York's history, in American history. And it'll be on the entire media around the whole world. Very specific details, wouldn't, wouldn't you say? Now, if I'm crazy and I made that up and I and I said that, or I'm guessing about that, then, you know, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, you know, whoa, like W-H-O-A-H, slow, you know, hold it, and whoa, W-O-E, you know, that's a bad word, right? That's a real curse word in the Bible, whoa is not good. You know, whoa, when it said, whoa, 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 W-O-E, whoo, ah, you're, 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 you're getting roasted in the fire, that's not, that's not good at all. So, on Tuesday morning, September 11, 2001, what I had described in explicit detail took place. And people were like, after me, like, well, should you have warned the church? I said, I did. Should you have, like, come out against it? I said, I spoke it. You said, well, it's up to you what to do with it. God just told me to say it. I saw it and I said it and it happened. So it's not like... And then, you know, in uh, the last day of April or the first day of May, I can't remember when it was. Maybe it was, I don't know if it was the end of April or the end of May. 
last couple of last day or two of the month. In 2007, I was in a meeting speaking in Nairobi, Kenya, and the Lord had me declare that there will be violence in the nation, terrible violence. And I had to wait to announce the election because you don't say that too early for, for a lot of reasons. So the Lord has me usually come out a little before the event and tell that one, you know, like not too far out, you know, a few couple, couple of weeks or whatever, or some days before the election, to announce and document who will be the next president. And I've done it four times in Kenya, five times now. In fact, the Moy regime, who was a dictator, Daniel Moy, for 24 years in Kenya, from the 70s till the 2001, yeah? 2002. So that would be like 80s, 90s. Yeah, that's about That's right. And um, the Lord had me prophesy that the government will collapse. It will fall. It will come down. And a new election will be called for. And there will be a new president in Kenya. I said it. In the year 2000. specifically in the middle of the year. And then a year went by or so, and the whole thing started to crumble. And then by a year and a half, it was like done, and they were calling for a new election. Then the Lord said to me, Mwai Kibaki will be elected unanimously as the president of Kenya, because I've chosen him, the Lord said, as a Joseph, as a repairer, as an administrator, as an economist, as an administrator, someone that's going to do some good things. And he did great things. And people from, ev listen to me, people from every tribe, every tribe in Kenya, tell me that with excitement, why Kibaki did great things. But he was very hindered, you know, later on for, you know, you know some other things happened. But he, he went at it, man. And the devil tried to kill him. But I prophesied, listen to me, hello. God had me prophesy that he would be healed. And he was. And uh, many people don't know this, but a leading bank manager, not a manager, the owner, the C, the, he's the chairman, or the MD, whatever you want to call it. And managing director, I guess. The boss, the CEO, whatever, I don't know. Maybe they have a board or it's owned publicly, so they can't call it the owner, but he's the guy that formed it and birthed it and is running it all these years, regardless of it's public or what. He took my printed prophecy, five or six pages. He took my printed prophecy and laid it on the, the legs of Mwai Kibaki when he was in a wheelchair in pain. And he grabbed him by the coat or the arm and he pulled him out of the wheelchair. And the next president, Mwai Kibaki, was screaming in pain saying, what are you doing? And the, the bank, the, the MD of the bank yelled at him and said, the prophet said, and he had the printed thing that God would heal you from that day. Can you imagine God could use the managing director of a huge bank? But he had my prophecy in his hand. It's like, it's like he, he, had the, he had the anointed thing on him, whether he, was the, he wasn't the originator of the anointing. It came through the word, you understand? That was released from heaven through the prophet. You understand that? So he was carrying that. He was echoing the voice. He was carrying that. And from that day, Mwai Kibaki started to mend and get better. Lift your head. And went on to be a great president. Then God said again, then the next election, the next president, and then the next election, fourth time, the next president, who would be? And you know what? God's already told me who the next president will be. I already know. In the, in the next upcoming election in a year and a half. Or, and I am not telling you and I'm not telling anyone, so don't even think about asking. If you want to be ignored, just ask the question. I'll act like I didn't hear you. Or I'll just say later, to, when, I, when God tells me to say it. One of the reasons you don't announce those things early is you don't want to get in, in the mix of all these devils and idiots that want to fight over everything, you know. Let me, let me say something. God has, a, God has a good side and he has a judgment side. You want to mess with him, he'll crush you. And that's our position. In fact, I was just having prayer with uh, 
today with some couple of leaders and uh, not, not leaders that I don't know that I shouldn't care about because they don't care about me. I'm talking about my people. You understand? Hello, my people, my leaders, not outside. I'm pretty much done with that, by the way. Going to extend energy for people that you don't know. They don't celebrate you. They talk behind your back. They give you no money. They make you suffer and sweat to drive and walk in the mud to get to their stinking building where they are. There's not even a proper bathroom. You know what I mean? On and on and on. You know the story. And then they don't even say thank you. So I'm pretty much done with that, by the way. We're raising up our own order. People that care. I prayed prophetically about that for like 30 minutes a while ago. It was coming out of my mouth. People that are our people, good people, surrounded by the best people. Lift your hands. You need that in your life. You, you know, I'm, tell, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to me, but I'm talking to you. You can't do all this big thing that God's ordained without people. It's not possible. You cannot run a big enterprise, have great resources, and a big thing without good people. You need the right people, the best people. Hello. And those that come and they go, whatever, let them keep going. The door is eternally moving. Go kick rocks somewhere else down the road. You know, someone could come and do some horrible evil, talk rubbish, stress you out, cause a wrong environment, and then after a while try to use another phone because you blocked their other one, use another phone to call you or write you and tell you, oh, sorry, you know. Uh, I'm okay. Oh, you're okay. What? The damage that you caused. What do you mean? We didn't forget about that. Yeah, we forgive you, but we didn't forget. So keep right on moving somewhere else. Stay away from me. You broke the protocol, man. You don't come in someone's environment and mess with them, mess them up. Hello. And then be invited back. Lift your hands. This is serious. I, I, I used to have a thing I called a two, a two time rule. Two, Two turns. Now it's one. It's gone back to one. Never was three. In baseball, three strikes, you're out, right? Baseball, you got swing once, you miss. Swing twice, you miss. Third time, you're out of here. <laughs> I used to always have this two-time thing, like once, you know, and then you have the first. And then I wonder if they do the same, the same lack that they had, the same mess that they did. You know what I mean? The same problem they caused, the same ineptness they had. I just wonder if it's still there. I want to give it a shot. I'm curious enough. And sure enough, like 99% of the time, they do it again. They don't make it right. Hello. Now, there's one or two or three in the earth that did very well, and they're very blessed today. In fact, they're millionaires and living like millionaires. Hello. Hello. And I didn't give them that opportunity. Other people came and gave it to them by God's favor. What they did is they helped me and they were loyal to me. And they cared about me, genuinely. And they did the right thing, genuinely. And they went all out to be passionate about what they're doing with a genuine intention and motive of good. And God bless them. I've said this before, but I wonder, you know, I really don't care. You know, I, I'm getting more busy by the minute. I've always been busy, but I'm at the point now, my, my emotional attitude about it all is I really don't care anymore. It's not for me to have the burden to want something for you that you don't even want for yourself. So I don't care. How you saying, Nairobi? Me, I don't care. Me, I. Me, I don't care. You say it in Swahili, however you say it. But the Lord... It cares for you, but it's up to you to grab a hold of what he wants. Now, as far as his position and destiny, you have to absolutely know and confess and declare and sign up for it in a thousand different ways, make a public vow, do all of this that God is going to cause you to be blessed and become rich. It doesn't come by chance. You have to prophesy it. I tell you, the Lord spoke to me again today to preach on this again, and I thought, wow. I love it. It's my favorite message, by the way. I, I think it's probably my favorite. Uh, certainly one of them. I'm thinking, can I do a series about faith? Can I do a series about deliverance? Can I do a healing, you know, have a healing service? Yeah, we'll have those. But this thing is so important. Because without resources, you don't have options. I heard a great, uh, uh, a very wealthy man. He's worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. Oh, wow. 
Uh, he said his business, pro his business from one, uh, what he was doing surpassed $10 billion and he got a percentage of all that. So he's loaded. But he said money gives you options. Money gives you services, security. If you ever need anything medically or to travel or to do anything you want to do, to buy anything you want to have, anything you need and want, you can have it when you're rich. You can't. You can't have it when you're poor. Can't do it. Imagine you want to do something, but you can't do it because you don't have any ability to do it. And some people can't get to the house of God sometimes because they don't have any money. They say they'd like to come, but they can't even afford the public transport, never mind a, a private car. That's way back. No, 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 not, not, not mad about it. In fact, we're sad about it. We feel like, we feel compassion, me and the Holy Spirit, we feel compassion, want to pray that people get delivered. You need to have your own car. You need to fill it up with petrol, pay your insurance, to do some repairs, whatever it is. It's there, man. If you get tired of driving, you have a driver. Take you around, go somewhere. Someone said to me, some lady said to me, oh no, I don't need anybody to drive me. I'll drive myself. I was like, help yourself, get passionate. Come on, talk back to me. So I said, you can have a driver. Oh, I don't need a driver. I'm going to drive myself. I said, good, we'll get your car first, and then you drive. But if, again, if you ever get tired, you can always hire a driver if you have enough money. Lift your hand. Hallelujah. We need to know that this comes from God. The blessing of the Lord. <laughs> I got to say it again. The blessing of the Lord, God Almighty. Not what people wanted to give you because they didn't want to give you anything. You know, I've been generous to people and they, they, don't, they don't even act right, you know? They don't even act right. It's, it's incredible. And I thought, well, how do you expect to have more when you can't handle the first part? One big thing that we need to put as an ingredient into our life is thanksgiving. Lift your hand. If someone's talking rubbish and telling stories, go ahead and listen to them. Help yourself. Listen to them. Let them fill your head with junk. Go ahead. Go right ahead because we're moving along. I mean, since I talked to anyone last, even in 24 hours, I've done amazing things that you don't even know about. God is always moving with me, always, every hour, every day I'm doing things. You know, I had this man of God, he, he died, uh, he's in America. Uh, he was a bit brilliant and a bit eccentric too in his own way. But he looked at me one time, he said, uh, you, you, I have the greatest respect for you. I said, why? He said, I can't read you. I can't figure you out. I can't get through what's around you. I can't pick up on what you're thinking. I don't know the depths of, I see the depths in you, but I don't know how to access them. What a, what a great man you are. Wow, he's like backing up like that, like this. I said, well, great, you know, thank you. Thank God. He said, anybody I see, I can read them, I can know them, I can do, but you, you're like, there's something around you, you're something, uh, yeah. And uh, in the same city uh, in America that that was, I won't say which city, in that same city, I was in a meeting with uh, Duncan Williams, the bishop from uh, Ghana. He calls himself Archbishop. I don't quite know what that is yet, so I'll just say Bishop, Reverend Doctor, the pastor, the man of God, the prayer warrior. Nicholas Duncan Williams, Archbishop, fine. You know, I'll, I'll, you know, Archbishop, whatever that is. Arch, it means like you have a, a steeple on top of your building, you know, the arch and the bishop is there under the, I don't know what, it, I, I don't quite know what it means yet, so it's okay with me though. He said, he, he called me out in the meeting and he said, the mantle of prosperity and wealth and elegance is it's, it's phenomenal. It's all around you. I see it, it's all over you. The power of God in your life says, I want to know you. You know, we got to talk a bit, but we... I've met it once or twice more, and we, we got to catch up again now in this season, because I'm going to be going to Ghana, and I'm sure I'll need to meet with him and do something with him also while I'm there. Uh, a university school and a, a big organization, a church, and there's a lot of prophets and apostles in there. 
They're inviting me. They've been after me to come. I just got a call yesterday from another West African country who's had great war. Uh, they want me to come. And they're getting all the leaders. They had the president's assistant on the phone with me yesterday. The, from the office of the president, got on the phone and talked to me with such honor. And they're begging me to come to their country to prophesy over their country. They're begging me to come. And uh, I've been putting it off, but they've been after me for a long time. I think this year, finally, it will happen. And many of these nations, I was just praying a while ago, many of these nations, the heads of government, the presidents, the, the, the who's who's will, will welcome us and will do some things that will trickle down even to the last, to, to, the, to the common ground where everybody's walking. To bring change, to break poverty, to break war, to break oppression, to break all that. It's in, the, it's in the works, it's in the motion of God. But this thing about people, we need to be careful, like there's good ones and there's bad ones. There's people that can help you and there's people that can hinder you based on what's in them. I had somebody that caused some, some mess, you know, some tension, and they actually said to me that they're a bad person. They actually wrote me a message. Now, I forgave and deleted it all, so I said, I don't know, I, just, I don't want to look, I don't want to read it again, so I just got rid of it. But if I wanted to have like the, uh, you know, the document of, from them about themselves, saying that they're a bad person, I thought, you know what, <laughs> you're, you're actually correct. <laughs> In my estimation, you're correct, you know. And then they want to cry later, say, sorry, sorry, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, no problem, but keep keep your 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 invisible friends like at a at a far at, at as far distance as possible we don't want to be in the midst of that you have to have good people around you now let me read this scripture to you in jeremiah 16 verse uh 17 excuse me jeremiah 17 verse 5 said thus says the lord cursed is the man who trusts in man. Now, again, that's really strong, you know? But I think God took his prophets and his psalmists, you know, over the edge to speak something that seems like rude, you know? It seems like you, you trust in a person, it means you're cursed? Are you kidding me? I'm yours, Lord. How could I be cursed? But I'll tell you what, every tragedy you ever have in your life is by trusting a wrong person. Every loss you ever have in your life is from trusting a wrong person. 100%, not even 99%. 100%, you trusted the wrong person. You believed the wrong person. They were a liar, but you didn't know it. Somebody's telling me now about some attorneys that do this and that, you know, big, uh, high-level stuff. I'm like, uh, I, I don't want to have to go in and listen to their give and gab and BS, you know, BS, a belief system, no. <laughs> what did you think I meant? All right, whatever. And try to figure out if they're good or not. Because the best con men are always good talkers. Hello? The best con people are always good, good, good at deceiving people. They're really good at it. Especially around here in Africa. Boy, they're good at it. They're talented. But hell, hell will be full of talented people that are evil. Lift your hand and say, I'm not one of them. I'm not going there. I don't care. If you, you know, if you think I care, like, you know, when I read stuff like this, the help of man is useless. I, I, I like to rephrase that a little bit, say, can often be useless. Can be useless, but not all the time. But the psalmist was really having a go at the principle there. And so is Jeremiah here. Curses the man who trusted man and makes flesh his strength. Well, that explains it a little bit. One whose heart departs from the Lord... He said, he'll be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see even when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salty land which is not inhabited. A salt land which is not inhabited. Boy, that's bad. And this was thus says the Lord. In other words, God was serious about you trusting in him, walking with him. But it gets good. Verse 7, 17, 7. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Cursed in man, but blessed 
in God. And whose hope is the Lord, for he or she, of course, it's genderless, he, when it says he, is talking about a man, a man, a, a human, which is also a woman. For he will be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will still be green, and will not be, they'll not be anxious in the year of drought, they won't care what they see around them, nor will they cease from yielding fruit. So when God's with you, there's a power source that's supernatural. That's what that's talking about. It doesn't matter what the natural circumstances that are going on. God is your source. I know people that are so blessed, and I'm one of them. I'll say it again. I know people that are so very blessed, and I am one of them. That I don't understand because the situation doesn't look great. The surroundings don't look great. But God keeps providing and keeps flourishing things. And one thing I wanted to say, we need to insert this in our vocabulary. Thank you, Lord. Someone write that down somewhere. Thank you, Lord. Because, you know, he did it. People didn't, people didn't do you as well as you thought they did, although they're doing you well because God's using them. God will always use people to help. He'll always use people. And you need more. I prayed this today prophetically, that we'll have too many good people, not too few. <laughs> That's a good prayer. And yesterday, God spoke to me about a time frame. Audibly, he spoke to me about a certain time frame of some things happening that are really grand, are really great, really huge, really blessed, really tremendous blessings for me and for the work and for everything that we're doing. And somebody confirmed that today and said, like, this, this time right now, I don't want to say details because I'm, I'm not giving out the intel and the info on this. It's none of your business. Praise the Lord. I'm keeping it covered because God's doing it. I'm not telling the devil and his ugly friends or anybody. Some things you want to, like, announce because you want it to be spread. Someone said, let's start a good rumor. You know, they said he's worth, like, $100 million, and someone gave him a $150 million house. 150 million a house or whatever, millions of dollars, you know? So you want to say, yeah, you know what? Somebody said, start a rumor, then everybody will go talking. Now they're prophesying for you. <laughs> they say, he's rich, he has millions, hundreds of millions, big house, big property, and it didn't even, that wasn't, you know? So I had a man of God who was telling a joke in America because people talk bad about him, you know? And he said, let's start a rumor. What rumor shall we start? And he's with his think tank of leaders, and they're all laughing. He said, let's say this and come out and shout it out. Then you know someone's going to take it and tell it. But some things, <laughs> and that could be good because they're helping you. They think they're hurting you, but they're helping you. Because they're saying something uh, that you really want to see happen in your life. Hello, lift your hands. You want a lot of vibration and voices and activity around things that you want. And not the things that you don't want, including stress and... Division and distraction and de de delay and contention and strife and evil. Evil tongues and evil hearts. You, you don't want that because those block progress. You don't want that. You want the positive thing. So if someone's saying something positive, it's all good. Look at so Jesus said what? What did he say? He said, hey, the disciples came to him and said, hey, these guys are saying these things about you and your name and... We don't know them. He, Jesus said, don't worry. If they're not against us, they're for us. If they're for us, they're not against us. So let them be. Let them flow. Jesus was brilliant. He didn't say, I have to go and control them. See, let's see if they've been through my discipleship class. Hello. Let's see if they've been through our new members class. Let's see if they know how to say it right, the way I would instruct them to say it. He said, just leave them, just leave them. They're not the ones that are against us, that's for sure. If they're trying to work with what, we're, what they've seen us do, leave them be and let them have it. Let, let them have at it. So they're not against us. That's a powerful word right there. Not against us. Write it down. You need people that are not against you. You can never get anything done. Try to work with people that are against you. They need to go with a swift kick and a tap 
with something on the back of their head and move on, man. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more. People that are against you, you think you can like, I'm, I'm talk, I, you know what, I'm not 22 years old, okay? I know you, maybe some people think I'm young and really like, look younger than I am, but I, you know, I've been around a few minutes, okay? A few minutes in eternity, which is like many decades, yeah? A few minutes in, e a few seconds in eternity is like many decades. Length of days is like just a <laughs> twinkling of an eye in the realm of eternity, okay? So uh, when I jokingly say a few minutes, I mean more than that, right, obviously. But you get to a certain point where you're like, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm not dancing with this foolishness. There needs to be codes of honor, codes of, not, not fake stuff. Like the fake news, they act like they're legitimate, but really they're evil at heart and they have an agenda to subvert and hurt. You can't have those kind of people in your world. You have to have the pros. It's the pros and the cons. You know, the cons is the bad, the pros is the good. You need to have the pros, not the cons. What do they used to call it in America? They had this old, you know, old school. They, they, they'd say, this is a confidence man. He's a confidence man. It means he's a con man. That's where they got con man from, confidence man. Confidence meaning he built, someone built confidence from you and them and to believe them. But if you believe a wrong voice and a wrong person, you'll suffer. Every theft, every loss, every lie, every hatred, every, every subversion, every distraction, every division came from a person that wasn't for you. And there's signs to these things that you need to pick up on next time. You know, there's things that we overlook. I've heard men say that. I overlooked. Oh, I've done it myself. Oh, oh, oh. I knew that about them, but I still thought it was going to be okay. Hello. I overlooked some things that I noticed that were very bad, but not, not, not anymore. Not anymore. Can't, it won't happen again. Can't happen again. Not anymore. If someone has a different agenda than yours, you have no obligation to them. If someone has a different agenda than God's, you have no obligation to them. This is a very powerful message. Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. He will not cease from yielding fruits. Next verse, uh, Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart of man is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can know it? But I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doings. When you do right unto God, he blesses you back. A cross reference for that is really a, a, really a good one in the New Testament, because we're in the old, in the old prophet Jeremiah here. But in Ephesians 6, 8 says, whatever good thing you do for another, the same good, even multiplied in blessing, God will do for you. It didn't say that the person would do good for you. See, the golden rule is do unto others as you would like them to do unto you. As you would have somebody do to you, you'd do good to them the way you'd like to receive good. But you could be good to someone and they treat you like a dog. You could be good to somebody and they abuse you. you, could, you, you I, I've seen this happen even recently. You could be good to somebody very kind, very gracious, very generous, all, everything, you know, out of your way to. Maybe they're doing something for you, but you're, you're helping them, you're, you know, they have a chance to learn a lot, to be blessed, even financially. Every way things are going good for them, and they have an attitude, they don't appreciate it. Well, God stops the program right there, draws the line, closes the door, and say, out, out with you, out. Get out. And that's it. And you know what? You know, some people would preach on this to try to embellish the point like, well, don't do that because God has given you the opportunity. I'm not doing that today. I'm not taking my time. It's up for you to decide what you want. It's up to you. Whatever you want, have at it, man. If you want bad, God will crush you. If you want good, God will bless you. Which is it? Hello. Myself, I'm standing in the pulpit here. I'm surrounded by a myriad of angels. 
The presence of God is here. His anointing is here. I'm speaking as his oracle. I, I really, you know, it's no problem for me. God is doing so much for me. You have no idea, and I'm not telling you. I'm not testifying. I'm not leaking the info. Oh, God did this. God did that. I was here. Who, what, where. Ah! Uh -uh. Ah! Uh -uh. You're not going to know. It's my world of blessing. Lift your hands. I wanna, I'm preaching this to, to give God glory, but also to help you create your own world. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. My God, I tell you, you don't know. If you knew what I know, if you see what I see, if you experience what I'm experiencing. My dear friend, the apostle in America, he reached out to me twice this week. We talked twice this week. I tell you what, I was just amazed. And the anointing came through. Whew! Things are happening better than, you know, even some things I'm seeing happen are a result of other people praying. I'm telling you, I want to say it again, you can't succeed alone. You have to have a hierarchy of good people. And if there's someone that's just tolerating you, and they're just existing, you know, and they're just doing little, they don't really care, you need to discern that quick. And not extend any of your energy in that, in that, in that equation, because it's a wrong equation. You know, math doesn't lie. You know, math is like this plus this equals this, you know, the equal sign. Hello? Two plus two equals five. Come on. Come on. Two plus two equals four. Is it five? Can, can you believe when someone tells you it's five? You better not. Because you can't change that equation. Two times two equals six. <laughs> Should you believe that? No, you can't. Two times three equals six. Two times two equals four. You can't change it, even good intention, bad intention, whatever, the system is locked in. It's been created as a thing that the whole world uses, and that's just how it is. But, but, but not because somebody made it up and it was their, you know, flair and flavor and gift and creativity to make that. It's just a system that's real. I, I think you can go half nuts if you try to think, who invented math? You'd have to say God. To soothe yourself, you have to say, God just started all of this. And it trickled down and went through the earth through humanity and whoever did it, I don't know. If you can think that someone made up that system, hello? And you have to adhere to it, and you say, well, what if it's wrong? Like I said, can I change it? Can I make two times two equal six? No. Can I make two plus two equal five? No. Who made it? God. That's why I like to post stuff on my, fa on my social media pages, like the Duoc Langor monkeys in Vietnam. Did you see those things? How many saw the picture of that? The cutest things. How many saw that? Regina, did you see them? Did you see those monkeys I posted about? Huh? Yeah. Black hands, black feet, white arms, red legs, red, 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 red like your sweater. Mercy, like your sweater is really red, bright red. Even more bright than that and shiny. The hair and white chin and lips and orange face. What about the ones I saw in Uganda that were running around me? The blue monkeys. They're really blue. How many saw those pictures? They're really blue. They have blue feet, blue tail, blue hands, blue face. And the rest is a different color. Come on. If you think that was someone's idea, you'd wonder how brilliant was that person. How can I ever achieve anything? You have to go back to the source. See, this is another reason why God said you have to trust in me. You have to know that it's me. Lift your hand. That, that takes all the pressure off, doesn't it? I, I'm not saying to be lazy and not do your work or be diligent in, in the things of business or life. Because he said if you get too tripped up with men, they can disappoint you. How many have ever been disappointed by a person? Oh, my. All hands, all feet, all fingers, all toes, and everything else. I have this beautiful uh, uh, suede, suede black uh, with a design uh, 
Italian designer shoes, and I got such a deal. I got them in a closeout place where they were new, and they send them the ones that they didn't sell. They're brand new, they're new, but they were at very high-end retail. Then they have an outlet, what they call an outlet shop, like a back-end rack shop where they sell the stuff that came from the store. So they have their business on two levels. They have the stuff they put in the retail stuff. They hope it sells for stupid money, crazy money, big. There's a, there's a, and then when the ones, the stock that doesn't, they send it to this outlet and they discount it down like, like one-fifth of the price, one-fourth of the price. Can you imagine? 20% of what it was selling for, or 25% or less or, than it was selling for. I got these sandals, Nike designer uh, uh, sandals. I, I could wear them in the gym. They're so nice, I don't even want to wear them in the gym. They're too nice. They're beautiful. I got them for $25. Don't tell anybody. They're hundreds of dollars. $25. I saw the price, $25. When I turned them up like that. I said, gee, my size, I try. Put it on my foot again. They fit perfect. I thought, Pfft. I wouldn't even think of leaving the store without them. I wouldn't even leave them there for five seconds thinking someone might come behind me and take them. I grabbed them. And then the, the, the suede leather, the suede uh, Italian designer, uh, can't remember the name of them, Georgie or something. I can't remember the name of them. Um, I, I, I got two of them. There were two of them there. I said, there's only, there's two. I'll probably need a second pair because they're so good. Let me just take two. And they were so cheap, you can't imagine. Anyway, my point is, I, 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 I have them in the car. I was going to put them on to be in our meeting, but I forgot. Because I had God talk, oh, bless me. Lord Jesus, I'm so busy for you. My mind was so engaged with the word. I'm listening to what he's saying. I'm getting my, all my prepared to come in the meeting, you know, carrying everything and doing my phones and all my technologies and wires and, you know, blah. I was just like, I forgot. So look, don't show anybody. So I kept my sandals on, but I have socks on. So, but my point is I was going to show you my toes. To wiggle my toes, you know, fingers and toes, all of them. Anyway, they're here, but they're covered by my, my socks. Anyway. But open toe, right? <laughs> Disappointments are many. But God is bigger than all of that. Somebody lift your hands and let's pray in the Holy Ghost just for 30 seconds over that and thank him. And this needs to be in your vocabulary every day. Anything little that he gives you. If you ate food and it didn't make you ill... And it was pretty okay, even though you'd like to have something maybe better. Thank him for that. If you had a ride in a car and it was okay, thank him for that. If you have a bed to sleep on, I'm serious. I, I know this sounds so elementary. Thank him for that. I do, I start, I'm doing it more now than I used to. Lord, and I want to pray this prayer of repentance. Lord, forgive me if I've not said thank you enough for how good you've been to me. Forgive me. Oh, God. Any day I acted like it wasn't enough what I had because I wanted more. I was frustrated because of what somebody did or said or did or didn't do, or, you know? Or I was, what? forgive me, Father, please cleanse me from that. It's unrighteous not to say thank you because he's been good. Thank him for everything. I mean everything. In everything, give thanks, the Bible says. Not for everything, because it's evil. You don't want to thank God for evil, because he's not the author of evil. But in everything, in every day. The, the scripture is very clear. You know, it says, in everything, give thanks. He didn't say for every. Paul didn't say for everything, give thanks, because a lot of things are evil in the world. You're not thanking God for that. Be careful about thinking that God's will is something adverse or evil. Like the plagues going on, like the terrorist threats going on. Not touching me. I'm not having any of it. Amen. Lift your hands. You connected with me. You're not going to have it either. I don't know. You're not going to touch the wrong thing. The wrong person's not going to come near you. And let the governments of the world have wisdom. If they have, you know, they call the president this and that. They just want to undermine any devils in America. They want to say anything against our president, anything he does. But his decisions are usually, I've seen very correct. 
So you say you want to stop uh, flights coming from a certain country. It's a threat to the society. Oh, that's racist against the Asian people or you bunch of idiots. There's one woman that came on and, you know, these people go so far, they're just possessed by the devil. Lift your head, praise the Lord. America needs a major deliverance, and so does Kenya even more. Praise the Lord, I think. Who, let's, take a, let's take a vote. Who needs more deliverance, the nation of Kenya or the nation of America? Oh, both are pretty, both are pretty toasty right now, but, but Lord have mercy. Deliverance needed. Yes, Lord. Deliverance very much needed. So the, this lady came on, and she started saying, like, oh, the word man offends us. So the guy says, well, the, Tucker Carlson on Fox News, he, he was the interviewer of this silly, misguided, twisted up lady, liberal snowflake, you know, psycho, okay, basically. And it says, what if you live in Manchester, New Hampshire? Manchester? What happens then? She says, well, the name of the city should be changed. You blithering idiot. So I wrote the word, I wrote, I, 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 I couldn't find the whole thing together. I probably, I'll probably find it back again and repost it, but I lost some of the text for the top part when I click share. So I, it would take a lot of research for me to go find that again from the archives of the posting and then put it back, but I just didn't have time. But hopefully I can do it. I said, I said, sorry, sorry this is what I wrote. Not as a pastor. Pastor's supposed to be nice a little bit, you know? You know, pastors are supposed to be a little bit nice, even if it's fake. Praise the Lord. But as the prophet of God, I'm speaking. I said, next to the word psycho in the dictionary, if you had a picture version, this lady's picture should be there. <laughs> next to the word psycho, if you have a picture, you know, a picture for every word, this lady's picture should be there. Then I, I said, let's, let's, let's torment them. Let's make them melt like snowflakes. You know, like the Wicked Witch of the West uh, in, in The Wizard of Oz? I'm melting! Ah! <laughs> I'm melting. And they made a spoof on that movie, a comedy. And, it, and the witch was a Chinese guy, like a, a guy in drag, like a, a man dressed like a woman, like the Wicked Witch of the West with the big black tall hat and all that. And he said, when it came time for that scene, he said, I'm melting, melting. You know, they can't say melting. They say it like L, like R. You know, they say that, that cataract, the car, the cataract, or the Rinkin, the Lincoln, the Lincoln car. They say, yeah, the Rinkin, you know. And some people in Kenya have that, that thing, too. They switch the R's and the L's around, right? Praise the Lord. I'm breast. I thought, what? <laughs> no, I'm not. You mean chicken or female? Which? I'm breast. What'd you say? Oh, bless. Oh, I get it. I get it. Okay, you, you made your L like an I. I understand. Turn light. The light is on. No, I mean right. Uh, rift. Then I had a guy from Western Kenya come up to me one time. He says, sir, we want to rift now. Left now. We want to left now. So it's boy, oh boy. You know, these people that I get around like. Lord Jesus, when will they, whenever, when, Lord, please help me. Please. How? Sir, we want to left now. Mean, meaning leave. And I was so nice to that kid. I was so nice to that kid. You have no idea. And he turned out to be a total, a total clown after the fact. I had to just laugh him off and have somebody deal with him, you know? Because he really did try to act stupid at the end of the game. It's really sad, you know? But I should have known the minute he said left, I said, well, how much can I trust this guy to have any intelligence in my world? Praise the Lord, moving right along. So the Chinese guy went, I'm melting. I'm like, I'm melting. You know, when the water, the holy water or the water came and the wicked witch of the West began to melt. So I said, Let, let's, let's help these snowflakes begin to melt, yeah? I just put man and everything. I put wool, like woman, and the interviewer said, well, the wo man is in the name woman. So they said, well, just call me a person, she says. Imagine. Just call me a person. Don't call me a woman. So I put M-A-N in caps everywhere I could. I have a whole paragraph on all these words I thought of. I put M-A-N in caps. You can't do away with that. 
Just like you can't do away with math because God made the math and he made the man and he made the woman. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. He made the system to be blessed. And he's the one that wrote it here that said, when you trust in me, I'll bless you. And he said, my blessing will make you rich and add no sorrow or trouble with it. So we pray and prophesy for acceleration in every good thing that God wants to do to make you rich and prosperous, to be blessed and above and not beneath, to be the head and not the tail, the lender, not the borrower. Bless when you come in, bless when you go out, bless when you're in the city, bless when you're in the countryside, wherever you find yourself, God is working for you, regardless of what you see here. Now, clearly in the scripture, it says all of these things look like they're happening bad in times of famine, in times of evil, in times of downturns of economy, in times of sickness trying to threaten the world, craziness trying to attract all kinds of division. But God is still there blessing the one who trusted him. And unless you know it, and unless you say it, and unless you declare it, and unless you absolutely adhere to it, that's the word A-D-H-E-R-E, -E, like ad. Ad means like what? Advertisement. Here means here. Here am I. I like to play on the word there. You adhere. You advertise. You take out the ad for the here, which is me, and adhere to the blessing of God. Say I'm doing it right now in Jesus' name. Now, you know, some people, you think God's going to come down off his throne and just begin to walk on the earth and say, well, uh, you know, I'm just going to pick randomly who I can bless. Or maybe some people have my favor, but others don't. No, you have to choose yourself. I'm amazed at the blessings of God. I'm amazed at the blessings of God. If I told you what happened to me in the last few days, you, you'd fall off your chair. Probably, so I won't tell you. As I said, I'm not telling details. And some people just think, well, you know, because I hear about this, some treasure there. Oh, well, then I think, how, what can I get from it? I've seen people do that. Even, even in the last many hours, I've seen people do it. But God just, you know, throws them off like the locust off the balcony. Very high balcony, a locust got way up there. Hundreds of feet up in the air. Very high, tall building. A, lo a locust got there. So I grabbed a hold of it. I took a tissue, you know. I didn't want to touch the thing. Jesus in heaven. It's a bit scary to grab a locust by the, you know. Some of you people here in Africa, you take, you take them and rip their legs off and eat them, you know. You boil it, you, you fry them in oil and eat them. And there's the brown ones and the green ones. Which tastes better? I, I'll never find out. Jesus, I, I saw these women in town years ago when they had a locust attack. This was a long time ago. This is not this year. Quite some time ago, on another trip, I was, I was, I was here. And, and, and they had bags. And one was looking for the green ones, and one was looking for the brown ones. You know those things that fly around? And there were so many of them. The, the weather, the rain and the weather. And they were catching them in their hands and putting them in the bag. And I, I asked somebody, what's wrong with those two women? What are you doing? Are you, what is that? What on earth? What on earth? earth. He said, oh, they're catching them because the people, they eat them, they like them. I was like, oh, conversation over. And they were going at it, and they were getting the bag, and they had these two bags filled with these things, and they were happy, like they got a harvest. Right in the city, right in the town. So I, anyway, I didn't want to touch this thing, so I was like, let me get a, a tissue paper. So I grabbed it by the back, by the legs, you know, and seeing if it was going to move, it started to move. So I pick it up and I threw it like this. Woo! Through the air. And the tissue went whoosh, flying. The wind caught it. And that thing went whoosh. I hope it flew before it hit the ground. You know, no parachute, right? But they have wings. The devouring spirit. You know, the scripture says about the, the locusts and the palmer worm, the, the worms and the locusts and all that, the devourer. But God said, I'll rebuke them for your sake. When you're what? In covenant with him. Now, of course, this has several subcategories of breakdown, which I'll do in another. You know, tithing, which is your kingdom tax, your kingdom, you know, tribute that you pay, you don't sow it. You don't give it, you pay it. Tithe is not a seed you sow. It's, a, it's really a debt you owe. 
It's God's money. It's his part. It's, he said the tithe belongs to me. So when you decide not to give it, that's why he said a curse can come. So you, cur you trust in yourself. Cursed are you. Cursed is the one who trusts in the man. You keep the tithe. You're, you're trusting in yourself. You're trusting that maybe God doesn't mean what he said. The smartest thing, you, one, of the, one of the smartest things, you, the very smartest thing you could ever do is get saved. Lift your hand. Receive Jesus as your Savior. Another smart thing you could do, very smart thing, is to give God his 10%. Because it's not yours. He said, I'll make more to do for you with the 90% than, I, than you could ever do with it yourself. Because I'll give insurance. I'll protect you from loss. The, these things that come to eat up your, your other 90% or the 100%. They'll, they'll be pushed away from you. They can't do. So you'll have the, the protection and the covering and the blessing, even for expansion, upon the 90% that you were allowed to keep. And he didn't just say, I'll just protect you and rebuke the devourer. He said, I'll pour you out blessing. That means more than what you had. I'll add to your stuff. Hello? So that's part of the covenant thing of being connected with the great boss. There's seed, a seed that you plant for a desired harvest. There's first fruits that you say, I'm honoring you to give me much more income. There's alms to the poor, helping missions, helping the poor, because the Bible says, when you, when you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. He said he'll repay you back, and he doesn't give it back the way you gave it, or just what you gave, he'll give you back multiplied. The scripture also talks about your health speeding forth, coming forth speedily. Your health becoming great because you're helping the poor. There's something to it. I saw a lady walking with a baby today outside, right outside the building here, but as I was about to come in, I just felt such compassion. And they walked so fast, and I wasn't ready to come out, come in yet. I, I couldn't find them, but I just thought, oh, God. And they're looking, the other lady's looking this way and that way. I said, that's okay. Some people look and they stare and they look like, like foolishly, they like spy on people. You know these people that are around like that? They're always staring at people, try to know something. That's a bad spirit. I always rebuke that. I don't, I don't admire that. I don't take it. I don't like it. But somebody that's like looking like that, so the baby's probably crying. The lady doesn't. Have, so I wish I could just give her something. Because that's good. And then, and then I want to not just do that. I want to tell them the word. You understand me? I want to tell him that God is good and he's rich and you need to connect with him. He'll share his stuff with you. Someone lift your hand. Don't ever give to a poor person and leave them that way. Well, here, she can take it, take it, receive it. Uh, yeah. And don't tell them anything good. Say, hey, you don't have, you don't have to be in this, in this position. You can have a business. You can have a good job. You can have a good life. You can have whatever. I'll pray that God will fix you up and you have all that. Is that all right? And then, it, and you know, a lot of people don't even tell people that stuff. They don't even tell people things like that. They just leave them like that. And some of the stingiest humans on the face of the earth are people around here. They wouldn't give someone a coin. They wouldn't part with nothing. I think of one guy that I know that I prayed for him to, to, to get justice and millions and millions of dollars worth of stuff that he was uh, stolen, uh, things were stolen from him. And, and judgment came upon the people. And this guy never even gave an offering. He hasn't even given an offering. And there's something that he had. He was like uh, things that he, he was asking me, negotiating a certain price that I buy the stuff from him. And foolishly, I did. Now I wish I could just throw it all out the window. And I just might. Give it away as a seed. I don't want to see that thing I bought from you. you. You say you're a kingdom person. You're a recipient of blessing. You tell me all your woes and problems. You're in court battles for years. Somebody did you wrong in a high position in the government. You can't go up in their face because they're related to who and who, and who and who is the number one who and who. And uh, you, you can't get any. And then all of a sudden things flip and turn around because I prayed, and you don't reciprocate nothing. I take. I made a note of that. I make a note of that. And I, I have a good mind. The stuff that I actually bought from them. Oh, we brought this in from here, from out of the country. We imported this and. Well, we had this made here, and, and, you know, now I can. You know, I'm thinking about, I'm just, even right now, even right now, it's coming to me right now. I should just take it all and get rid of it. Not even sell it, just give it away. Maybe it'll help somebody. And God could bless me. I, I like this, uh, this saying I saw. 
When God's promise use you, he's going to give you back more than you lost. Believe him, because he will. All your trouble, all your pain, all your anguish, all your sorrow, God will make up for it. Not make up for it with it. He'll give you much, much more. Because that's his nature. That's how he is. You can never lose enough for God not to be able to fix you up. Look at Job. He lost billions of dollars, billions of dollars worth of stuff. Animals and family and wealth. Even the camels were worth in the billions. God gave him back double the camels, double the sheep, double the animals, double the land, a new family. The most beautiful daughters he had. Another family he had after losing the first one. And they said they were the most beautiful women in the, in the world. And he was the richest man in the East. Come on, don't tell me God can't do you right. Abraham was made very rich. And God made that same covenant promise to me. Thomas, I'm making you very rich. I have to say it because I want to help you. So, so this is part of, my, part of my job. Now this I can share, but I even feel a little bit, ugh, you know, because somebody's jealous or whatever, you jealous twit. Let me tell you something, jealousy is satanic. It's the road of all evil. Jealousy and envy and hatred, all that stuff, it's a bad spirit, it's evil. And you need to discern anything that's around you like that and dismiss it and get it out of here, get it away from you. Like when I visited you that time and exposed that fool. That guy's a jerk, he has no hope, don't pray for him, kick him out, just believe God that he'll be dismissed from your company and put someone in there that can like, do a little bit like this to you and say, yeah, I, I'm glad for you being here. That's the kind of people you need around you in your business. Don't ever try to fix someone. You, you know, liars and cheaters, I, I ha, I, a great man of God, he said, I'm, in the, I'm on the earth for these many decades. I've never seen a liar cured. Never. He said, maybe someone else could have success with this, but I don't know how to, I don't know how to help a liar, a cheater, a thief. I don't know how to help them. I have, I have the same experience. Someone who's a liar, an underminer, a cheater, I don't know how to help them. Can I pray if I feel to? <laughs> if God says pray for them, yeah, sure. Gladly, whatever the Lord says, oh, we'll do it. But did they ever return the money that they stole? Never seen it. Never seen it, not even once. Did they really repent of lying? Nope. Nope, they don't. They keep doing it. People like that. Say, so you can get healed, but not here. <laughs> Lift your hands. You, I, I pray that you get delivered, but not on my watch. And may, maybe if you're really delivered, let's like, you know, you want to be blessed. Okay, come take a seat. But I almost did that to someone yesterday. You know, give them one of these signs, you know. The crucifix, you know. They look at you with that funny look. You go, hey, you. Is this helping you? You got to know your environment. You got to have the right environment. You got to know that God thinks the world of you. You're the apple of his eye. All he wants for you is blessings and riches and glory and honor and dominion and might and power and splendor and elegance and opulence, wealth transfer, abundance, prosperity, that's what he wants for you, and success in the mission that he's ordained you to do. Now, how many receive all that? Receive it in Jesus' name. Now, now the other thing is, you can't really succeed well when you're not in the per perfect plan of action that God has. There's a place for you. There's a people for you. There's a destined assignment. I marvel at the favor that just comes by, even by, it seems like it's by accident, not by purpose. Like, I didn't... Things that I didn't make happen. Other people just decided to do things, to be a blessing, to do. And it's just because, because you're in the place that God said to be. So there's no guarantee that you're going to succeed. I have to say this on the other side of it to teach you something about this, how this works. If you're in the wrong place with the wrong people at the wrong time doing the wrong thing or even doing the right thing. You could be the right person doing the right thing but in the wrong place with the wrong people and you won't prosper. 
Wave your hand at me if you got that. You out there watching on the internet, give me a wave. By the way, share this. I, I keep forgetting to say things like that. Hit the share button. A lot of people need to see this right here. They need this, they need this message right here. Oh yes. Share this with your friends, you're sowing a good seed. Give me a wave. Put a wave in the comment section. Everybody click, click the little emoji, the wave emoji. Give me a wave. Do it! Say I'm receiving that. But it works, the, there's another thing that you need to understand. You can be the right person with the right motive, good person, gifted person, talented person, brilliant person, anointed person. But if you're not in the assigned place and people where God has ordained, things won't work well. You'll just lose, you'll just exist. And the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 11, 23, many are weak and sickly among you because they don't discern the Lord's body. You have to discern the body of the Lord, like where he's ordained you to be, what he's ordained you to be doing, and that's where blessing will be. Health and provision and well-being will be there. But if you're not in the right functionality, in the right situation in the body, then, you know, things, things weakness and sickness, even to sleep, which even meant to die prematurely. Well, we, we're not having that. No, I, I, don't even, I don't even like saying that. But when, you, when you're not about the Father's business, oh my. Woe again, it's W-O-E, it's a bad word. Now, the scripture says in Isaiah 52, how beautiful are the feet of those that carry the good news. Beautiful feet. I, I was getting a pedicure one time in America in this place, and this woman said, uh, I don't know you. She didn't know who I was. She said, but you have the most beautiful feet I've ever seen on a man. Wow. Your toes and toenails and feet and skin and everything. The way that so some men have some really ugly feet. I said, I know. Some of them are like walking on bricks. They need a pedicure, but they're too, they're too ignorant to get one. I have preachers. That, there's some preachers in America saying, like, if you go to the spa and get a pedicure, are you a real man? I thought, yeah, more than you. I wouldn't want to see your feet, Jack. I don't care if you're a pastor so-and-so. Stick it. That's your opinion. Stick it somewhere. That's your opinion. That's not gospel. You don't have any right to tell anybody that. But the health benefits of, you know, getting the dead skin off your feet and taking care of your cuticles and your... I don't want to get into all that. You know what I mean? Just to make sure everything... So, so I, I do that when I can. So he said... You have the most beautiful feet I've ever seen on a man. I said, I said, dear, there's a reason for that. I don't know if I'll tell you but what it is, but I said, there's a very good reason for that. And I thought of Isaiah 52. How beautiful are the feet of those that carry the good news. Well, now the reason I'm saying this, because this morning, last night, I think, I, 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 no, I think it was today. It was not, not yesterday. It was more, more today in the morning. I, I heard this again. Beautiful. And I thought, Lord, I want to carry your good news, not less. I want to do it more. I want to be, I want to be everywhere you want me to be. Please. I want beautiful feet. <laughs> I want to always have beautiful feet. Come on, somebody. And it's not just your feet, it's your life. Your life will flourish like a palm tree. Your life will flourish like the flowers blooming and growing. Your life will be a place of bliss and ecstasy and pleasure and wealth and blessing and treasure and prosperity and abundance because you're doing what the Lord wants. It's the destiny of the person that can sign up for it to be rich. How it's all going to happen, God knows. How he'll make it happen is by the level and decree and decree, degree and decree of your faithfulness. Does your faithfulness and loyalty and passion extend to the heavens where God sees it and goes, wow, let's bless that guy. Let's bless that lady. I've seen it happen. People that had nothing when they met me and they did good things and today they're millionaires. 
Today they're running companies, living in palatial estates with people that just were favorable to them. I didn't know those businesses. I didn't know those places. I didn't do that. God did it through other people for them as a harvest for what they did for me. I have people now, the most, the most beautiful people, and you don't know how blessed they're becoming. And what's about to happen is even more than, they, than is even imaginable. Why? Because their faithfulness cries to the heavens. Their loyalty and love and power and compassion cries out to God. Their action, their life, their works speaks for them. Jeremiah 17, 10. Boy, I've shared a lot and I don't even feel like I've cracked this message open enough. But anyway, such is life. Jeremiah 17, 10 says, 17, 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, even to give every man, watch this, every woman, according to their ways. So your actions and your life speaks for you. Are you getting that? But I am destined to be so blessed. It's beyond imagination. Let me, let me give you some verses uh, to make a note of. I wish somebody was really diligent and could type these on the screen one by one. If you need time, uh, play the replay where you can pause the message right now. It's live. But click, uh, wait till this uh, posts up and then you can pause it. After each point, and I want someone to type these in just, just as a comment. If you want to find the whole verse, that would be really awesome. I wonder if someone could do that. Find the whole verse and copy and paste it from the Bible app, the Bible software. And let people read it in the comments section. Isaiah 10.27 talks about the anointing. Isaiah 11.2 talks about the attributes of the Holy Spirit. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and, and on. Isaiah 48.17 I, the Lord, will teach you the prophet and lead you in how you should go, where you should go, what you should do, all of that. Isaiah 43, 2, 18, 19, and 20. Deuteronomy 8, whole chapter. Psalm 66, I think from the 5th to the 20th verse is good, but let's say the 12th verse in particular. Psalm 66, verse 12. Isaiah 55, 11, my word will not return to me void. But it will accomplish, accomplish what I want and it will prosper in the thing that I've sent it to do. John 15, 7, you abide in me, my words abide in you, you'll ask for what you want and you'll be grant, it'll be granted unto you, you'll have it. Third John 2, prosperity, good health, and great mind, my will for you. The Lord said, through the beloved John. 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 4, and 5. Ephesians 1, 17 to 23. Ephesians 3, 14 to 16. Revelation 5, 12. And th these are some scriptures that I was hearing from the Lord, and I'm declaring them over your life. I'm declaring these over your life, and they have to do with success, Warfare, breakthrough, wealth, creation, abundance. Another one I could add to it is Psalm 35, 27. Let me add that right now. It's not in my notes here, but I want to just add that right now. God said, I'll take pleasure in, my, in the prosperity of my servant. A couple of affirmations I want to say. I attract money and wealth and success. Money comes to me in the expected ways and the unexpected ways. I'm worthy of making more money and having wealth. I move from any kind of poverty experience or thinking into abundance in reality and abundant thinking and abundant living in manifestation. I'm open and receptive to all the wealth and treasure that life can offer to me. I take it in Jesus' name. I embrace new avenues of income, new blessings, new treasures coming to me. I welcome an unlimited source of income and wealth into my life. In Jesus' name. That's a few. So much more, but I'm wrapping this for the moment. I want to pray this prayer of blessing over you. God, 
is going to manifest these words that I have spoken prophetically by the Spirit of the Lord in this message over your life. Claim them, take it, share this broadcast, replay it, type it out, transcribe it, make it your own little uh, note-taking adventure. I'm endeavoring to make all of these messages into books, and I'm doing that. This is another one right here. <laughs> Maybe even to make them little mini books, just one message and make it a mini book. Some big, some small, some medium, and just also put them out online that the nations, people all over the nations of the world can receive and partake of what God is saying through his prophet here, Thomas Manton IV. I'm excited to tell you that the Lord is blessing us in magnanimous ways. I'm excited to tell you that we don't have any sad stories to tell about our fate and lot in life, as people say. We're blessed. We're rich. We're abundant. We're provided for. We're cared for. God was and is and always will be my great provider and your great provider if you're connected. God will see to it that the impossible becomes made possible. God will see to it that what the enemy's done to try to trick you up and mess you up and trip you in the way will be destroyed. Even in double portion miracles. Not just one source doing it, but two and three and four and five. It'll be like a movement of heaven moving through many vessels and you'll just hear it. You'll just stumble upon it. Even today I heard another thing. I didn't comment because of some other things already happening in that realm. I, I can't tell, tell details. So many good things. I mean, beyond the normal. So these, these, these jack somethings, you know, I'll leave a little blank for the three letters. They want to say anything negative. Ah, it's them that's full of it. Hello. Full of it. Little slandering, gossiping schmucks. That's a New York term. A schmuck is like a real bad person. Like, yes, a, that guy's a schmuck, you know? It's just like he's a schmuck. He's just a jerk, he's a loser, he's an agitator, he's, a, he's not worth, he's worthless. As some lady, I was in this high, high level place, this, this big posh place, you know, that, as you would say. And she said to me, you know, our men are useless, you know, she said to me. I looked at her and said, hmm? <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't choose to comment, but I could have commented many things, yeah. That's what she said to me. They see a successful person, you know, they go, yeah, you know, these other people, people around, you know, around, you know, how they are. They're just. Uh, I have to say this. You have to know, you know, what to swing at and engage and what to ignore. You, maturity denotes this. Maturity, when you come into maturity, you don't try to fight every battle. You don't try to answer every contentious word or everything that's said to you. You ignore them. You leave it. You, do, you live your life. They can't figure you out. They can't penetrate your blessed world. No matter what their problem is. Are you ready for that kind of blessing? Now you have to cooperate in that yourself. God just, God didn't say guard, guard your heart. He tells us to guard our heart and the garden but then we don't do it. We expect him. He's going to guard our heart. He's going to guard the garden. Well, notice uh, Adam and Eve uh, had a real problem. Because hmm? Adam disobeyed for guarding. And guarding the heart, the, for out of it flow the issues of life. The glory of God coming through you, the peace, the power, the purpose, the message, the passion, the whole thing, the production, The providence, the provision, the prominence, <laughs> the premise, the promise, the prosperity, the platform, all of that needs protection. And you have a part in that. And part of it is by ignoring wrong people and wrong voices. Sometimes someone will say something and I just go and pray and I pray in secret and God rewards openly. I 
told you about someone that wanted to slander us, talk rubbish to me. No, they didn't do it to uh, us. They did it direct. They said it direct to me. I thought, can you talk to me like that? And I helped you and I know you? No, 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 no. I went and I prayed. Next thing you know, they gave the report back that they started a venture and nothing worked. Everybody mocked them, persecuted them, stole from them, hit them, wouldn't cooperate, it didn't go, and they write these big words at the end of their statement. Why, why, why? I thought, I'd, should I answer? But I won't tell them. Because you try to tell them, yeah, you know what? I did that, I think. <laughs> Being God arranged that. But you couldn't handle it, because even the fact that we interacted, you know, uh, you, you, you wanted to say all kinds of stuff. So let me just leave you, in the, leave you in the cauldron. You set the fire under your own tail. Hello? Under your own hippopotamus-ish, hiboko-ish posterior. You set the kettle ablaze. You did it. You did it. I, I, heard, I heard a thing, and I can't tell the details of it. It's a bit sensitive. There were some evil people that got caught doing, and they were pleading for like leniency and to get away. And the other person said to them, no, 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 no. You had an intention to go hurt people. No, it's over for you. And it was. Lift your hands. You don't think that there's not consequence? What Bible are we reading? What God are we serving if we think, he said, vengeance is mine, and then he's not going to do something about it. He's just going to let people run over you, stop you, hurt you, destroy you, steal from you, slander you, gossip, try to hurt you, curse you, put your name, put your name in the trash bin, hurt your work, hurt your life, steal from you, and God says, oh, it's all right. Huh? What Bible? I have this one. The whole, it says the Holy Bible. Holy means one, meaning it came from one mind, the supreme mastermind of the universe, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Holy Bible! I, the Lord, am holy, means I'm one. Holiness means one. I feel the anointing. Shakatiaka sototala. Woo, the anointing is falling right now. I feel the power of God just came all over me. Holy, we're one together. Me and this, me and this, hello. You, you, you're not going to overstep this and play with this. Oh, my. You think, well, someone looks at, well, it looks like they got away. Got away with what? No, they didn't. The Holy Bible, first page, after special occasions announcements, that's the first page, the Holy Bible, New King James Version. I will give every man or woman according to their works. But the one that trusts in me and walks with me, they'll be blessed and their fruit will never stop being yielded. John 15, 16 is another verse that says, he said, uh, I will for you to bear fruit, the Lord Jesus said. Jesus said to us, I want you to bear fruit and I want the fruit to remain. The fruit of someone's life and experience has to speak blessing has to declare, has to testify of blessing. I, I got so busy doing some other things, I haven't even dug into the files and the letters that we get, and I find some of them just pop up to me, you know, I find them again or they just appear again, and I'm reposting them, I'm gonna do a lot more of that. Testimonies that people write me of the miracles they received through our ministry, phenomenal, phenomenal, supernatural. Jesus even said, hey, uh, don't just listen to what I say. Look at what I do. Look at what happens. How many have been blessed by being a part of us? Something happened. A woman that just became a partner, a monthly partner from America, she said she got thousands of dollars to pay all of her bills and expenses after sowing the first seed for the first month of a certain amount. Imagine. It happens every day, everywhere, all over the world. And it's the will of God for it to go higher and deeper and wider, not 
less but more. And it is, when major leaders start calling you from other countries and you've never been there before, that's a, that's a turning up of a harvest. You've been planting the seed out there through the air and then it's coming back. And this is, hap this is happening with many different countries. I, I, I am, I'm just amazed to see it. And we have to go to many of those places. Lift your hands, let's pray. Father, thank you for the grace. I pray for people's businesses, personal life, financial life, what, what things that they want to need, preachers for their ministry. If they're good, if you're not one of these con artist preachers, and I tell you, some of these preachers, you know, they come up and say, hi, oh, I've been looking for you, and then they ask you one question, and you give them an answer, and they walk away sad like the rich young ruler. No, you just know you'll never see them. You'll never see them. They'll never turn up. They'll never listen. It's really sick. Such a divide, very complicated people here. Complicated. Some of the people you see them, you know, what do you want? Do you want the word and the truth or do you want some nice sing song, you know, nicey nice message, everyone to smile at you? Which is it? But God is standing right here saying, I want to bless you. I want you to be rich. Very rich. And it's happening very successful and it's happening father i declare that grace over every person connecting with this by faith that their life will flourish with your goodness because their trust is in you in jesus mighty name every good thing is coming to me and i'm coming to it every source of treasure is coming to me it's coming to me in my hands i receive the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow, no trouble, no complications. It's flowing easily. It's happening. I rebuke stress, anxiety, fear, sickness, disease, oppression, pain of any kind. It goes from your life, from my world to, from your world. It goes out and far away. And the peace of the presence of the Lord is with us. Again, anybody with other agendas, you, you don't have to entertain it. You don't have to entertain it. You don't. People that are just have their crazy ways about them, you don't have to entertain it. You need peace in your world. A very seasoned man said that jealousy and envy, because he's so blessed, he said it's, a, it's satanic. And he said, now at this point in my life, I need peace, I need honor, I need the right atmosphere, the right people. I just, I don't have time in my world for anything else. It has, to, it has to be peace, I have to be happy. Very important, but you have a part in making that a reality. By accepting what the Lord said here, and also working in that thing, and always continuing to do good that he can bless you back with more and more. In Jesus' name, so be it. I'm Thomas Manton IV, love you much. I'm praying for you that I, in the words of Isaiah in 48, 17 says you're gonna profit by the prophet, and he's going to lead you and guide you how you should go, and you will be blessed in, with increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Share this with your friends. I'll talk to you all on the next broadcast. Love you much. Have a great day.